Hello, and welcome to a recap of today's Python Django live code hangout. Today, we've been adding a new pagination feature to the Western Friend website. We'll take a quick look at that. So the Western Friend website has a multimedia library, and we have a faceted search interface. And at any time, there can be many, you know, tens or even hundreds of multimedia library items uh, if you remove all the search criteria and just browse the entire library. So we want to have a paginated browsing interface. The problem is that the full library contains some 40 pages of multimedia items when it's paginated at 10 items per page. And uh, so it starts to wrap around listing all 40 of those pages. So today we just shortened it out. And basically we have a moving ellipsis that we'll look at a few pages or behind a few pages and add a corresponding uh, gap. But let's still let you kind of jump around in the content a little bit. So let's take a look at how we did that. wasn't too many lines of code. We've already got a working paginator prior to this um, to, to today's session. Essentially, what we want to do is get an argument from the URL to see what page the uh, user is requesting. I'll show, I'll show you that real quick. It's right here, page nine. And by default, we showed just the first page. Oops. So we'll come to that in just a moment. So we get this from the URL and it comes in as a string. That's a kind of a caveat. Any query string argument, arguments are a string, even though we're treating them as numbers. So I, I cast it here to an integer. We're gonna to need to be an integer just a little bit later. And I made myself a note to remember that. I'm casting it to an integer here, why? Because I'm using that in the get lighted page range. The code explains how quite well, typically, if you're writing clean code, and I try to do that uh, to help myself out in the future, understand what I've written in the past. But it doesn't explain necessarily why I want an integer here. Uh, I, so I can kind of see that I did cast it to an integer if I read closely, but even then, uh, it's a small detail that I could overlook. So I give myself a little bit of a meaningful comment without making the code too comment heavy. Uh, if we cannot cast it to an integer, we're just going to fall back to this default pages one. Uh, I want to be kind of permissive with what comes in and um, fall back to a sensible behavior if we get a value error when we try to cast that to an integer. And I believe that's a safe operation to take some URL string and cast it to an integer. But if uh, I'm mistaken, please feel free to leave a comment and I'll look for a cleaner way of doing this, basically getting a URL parameter as a particular data type unless I have to cast it to an integer at some point. So our paginator has some number of items per page and right now I've got it set to one item per page just to allow us to kind of see the thing working properly uh, without having to add a bunch of dummy items. So we just created a regular Django paginator and this comes straight out of the Django documentation, but the documentation and many of the tutorials about Django pagination are relatively simple examples and they're not kind of going to prepare your, you for a site that grows in the number of an amount of content uh, that typically is um, on these paginated feeds or listings. And we quickly outgrew this pagination when we imported the actual website data. So the, um, website Real Python has an article on uh, developer and user friendly pagination, and I basically have uh, followed their guide. Uh, the key part of it being I'm using the Django templating um, engine, I'm not using a single page application framework. So, what we do is uh, set up a paginator with these library items that I've basically filtered in a previous line of code and the number of items per page, and we're going to try to get a page number that was passed in. Now, the, this could be any number. It has to be an integer, otherwise we're not gonna, or else it's gonna be one. So it's gonna try to get that. And if we only have 10 pages and somebody asks for the 50th page, uh, it's gonna give an empty, uh, basically the last page. It'll jump to that. Uh, 
this no longer is quite valid. There should not, we shouldn't get that exception anymore because I've also cast it to an integer, to integer there, but then, and I'll defaulted it there too. So I can actually clean this up. I can probably remove that branch. Nonetheless, pre, I encountered this previously where what comes in as a query string argument is a string and needs to be casted, cast to the proper data type <laughs> in order to be passed into something uh, that's expecting an integer. The only other line here we've added, and this comes again from the real Python article, is to use this function get elided page range centered around the, the page number that we're requesting. So that's going to look to the left and right of it, and after a certain number of pages, it's going to add an elided value and then give you all the way to the uh, first and last. So in this case, we're going to the last page, last couple of pages, and if I move over here, it'll give you the elided value and the first couple of pages. And these next and previous and first and last buttons were here from a previous um, tutorial or previous coding session. Let's take a quick look at the template now. So we basically, now that we've got this, it's a property now, adjusted elided pages. It's a list of pages, content pages with the elided values at their appropriate intervals. We're going to iterate over those for each page number which is either an uh, integer or an ellipsis. We are going to check if it is the current page number. And if so, we're going to apply this active highlighting and, uh, and um, allow somebody to click on it, even though they would just be taken back to the page that they're currently on. I suppose that was unnecessary, but in any case, that's that. So we're allowing a link to self basically. <laughs> And if it is the ellipsis, well, the page number value here, and I have a little bit of land, I'm going to clean that up, uh, will be the actual ellipsis instead of a number. So then in that case, we're just displaying the page number again. All of these, we display the page number. But in that case, instead of an integer, we have this value here. And I just put a slight bit of, uh, I put a span around that and a little bit of bootstrap markup. I am using bootstrap five. I highly recommend it if you're starting out to, you know, it's going to save you a lot of time and uh, it take you quite a long way using modern CSS, uh, give you mobile responsive uh, web template and uh, it's quite extensible. So yeah, consider bootstrap. Don't put it behind us. It's actually very mature and, uh, continually evolving and has a lot of contributors. So that's the side, that's my little spiel on Bootstrap. So don't discount it because it's uh, popular. And in the last one, we are just um, essentially displaying a regular list item with a Bootstrap page link uh, for this list item. Uh, for this list, where is that parent class? Anyway. These are all just uh, essentially page link buttons. So that's been a recap. If you're interested in adding pagination to your Python Django project, uh, you can check out this pull request, number 598 on the Western Friend website. All of our source code is open on GitHub, freely licensed. Feel free to see how we've built the many features here and see if any of them are relevant to the projects you're working on. Okay, well, I appreciate your time. Thanks for checking out this summary video. I hope you're doing well and have a great day.